if you've ever done any of the Sands Net Wars tournaments, he's one of the main people behind it. He uh, he hardens the um, the whole servers and everything else. They're not hackable themselves, and does a, a great deal of um, of things in that regard. And he specializes in uh, in pen testing also. And um, today he's going to talk to us a little bit. Um, about applications. So over to you. Thanks, Lee. Yeah, I would never, uh, I would never say that um, our servers are unhackable. Uh, I think that's just an invitation for disaster, but uh, we do try to do the best we can so that the game infrastructure is relatively stable. Um, so yeah, as, as far as where uh, my start came in InfoSec, uh, when I was in high school, which I think is, is the bulk of the audience here, uh, I, was, I was a total nerd, uh, proud of it, marching band, jazz band, chorus, barbershop, all that, captain of the math team, robotics team, uh, and then um, I just, I've just always been a nerd. I've loved uh, intellectual things, right? Um, now, I say that, but I don't think at all that you have to have been uh, you know, programming since since third grade to be successful in this field. Um, my wife was very much a hockey person growing up, and I mean field hockey and ice hockey, and she now has uh, three certifications from SANS and is moving toward uh, cybersecurity. But, uh, but my background, yeah, total nerd. Um, fast forward a bit in college, got a degree in computer science, got a commission as a, uh, as a second lieutenant in the army. Um, I, I actually found the military through a band. I wanted to like be in another band. So I joined the National Guard band and got money for college and all that stuff and got away from cybersecurity for a while. Did the army stuff active duty in my state for, for a good number of years and, and just kept getting like kept getting called back. I'd, I'd find a little thing I could do and, and play with somewhere and then it would just kind of grab my attention. And uh, anyway, I got off that and now I do this full time. Uh, like Lee said, pen testing. I think that's a, a, a great fun thing to do. If you missed Jeff's talk, go ahead and uh, go back and catch that one. Uh, and then, yeah, I, I help build these these weird uh, hacker games. Uh, they're they're whimsical, they're educational, uh, and it's neat to work on them because, you know, one day I can be working on setting up some SharePoint server for someone to attack, and the next day I'm writing uh, uh, dialogue in poetry for, for elves. So, um, so, Jeff, by the way, thanks for the plug for the holiday hack. We will come back around to that. All right. So why is it that we're looking at uh, kittenwar.com? This is not, uh, by the way, a... Uh, a counter hack product. <laughs> this is not something that is in scope for anybody to attack, but I think it's a good example of a web application. What the heck is a web application? Well, um, anything you deal with on the internet that's more than just basic static content is an application. If it's a wiki that you can edit, if it's a search engine you can plug something into, then uh, it's a web application. So even something simple like kittenwar.com, where we can vote on the cutest kitten here, uh, Killer or Pedro, I'm going to go with uh, killer. Um, when it comes back, it says, oh, 58% of people agree that killer was the cuter of those two kittens. So that's an indicator that there's something going on uh, behind the scenes here in, in this website. So uh, it's not just serving me up uh, the same page every time. There, there's, there's logic going on behind it. Now, probably not a whole lot of logic on Kitten War, and that's fine, right? We don't expect much of you, Kitten War. Thank you for being there. Um, by the way, I bring up the site uh, specifically uh, because it's a good example of a simple, simple web application, but also because it is straight HTTP. If you look in the URL bar, I get the little angry padlock there. Um, this is not secured in any way, which means it's a good site to kind of to kind of uh, observe. Again, we're not attacking it in any way, but uh, if you caught the last talk yesterday, there, there was uh, a discussion on Wireshark. And uh, I'll let you read that if you want to learn, uh, go watch that if you want to learn more about that kind of thing. But we can go to Kitten War and we can refresh and we can actually find the traffic um, that we're doing tcp.port equals 80. We can actually see the traffic back and forth to kittenwar.com and, uh, and observe that. So we can see some plain text stuff coming through. So anyway, little plug for uh, that last talk yesterday and, uh, and Wireshark seeing those things. Um, now, when we get a page from a web server, it's not just uh, you know cute cute images and green text and green backgrounds. It actually comes to us as code. And you you may have already played with this, but if you right click in just about any browser, you can pick view page source or maybe view frame source or something, and then you can see uh, what the code is coming in behind it. Now, um, web app pen testing is something fun that I enjoy doing, and it's good to know a little bit of programming to do that kind of work. 
Also, if you want to develop web apps, we hope that you will grow up and be secure web app developers because uh, we need the whole internet to be more secure in general. Uh, but uh, but it's, as far as what's in a web page, you're going to see things like this. This is uh, HTML code. You'll see things uh, like this. This is some, some JavaScript code. You can, you'll see other things like CSS, that's cascading style sheets. Those kind of help make things pretty. Um, and that's what, what really, um, that's what's, what comes from the web server to uh, your web browser, to the client, uh, that then gets interpreted as uh, kittens and green text. So be aware that that's going on behind the scene. By the way, if you want to look at some more of that raw stuff in, in uh, Windows 10 or in Linux or in Mac, if you open up a terminal, you can curl. And here I've got a command curl-v, that means verbosely, curl verbosely kittenwar.com, and I want to see what's going on. And I hit that. And I see all that, the JavaScript stuff, and there's HTML. And I also see what the request is that comes out of my curl command. Hey, I'm curl, I want kittenwar.com, I'll take anything back. And then before that, before even the, the HTML, there's, there's a big block of, uh, of server headers that come back to say, hey, this is what time I think it is. This is the kind of content I'm giving back. Um, Sometimes when we do web app pen testing, we're actually kind of playing around with those pieces with, with the cookies that are sent out or with different parameters that are sent back and forth. Um, but uh, but this, these we don't usually get to see these within the web browser. So let's thank you very much, command line. We're done with you. Okay. And thank you, Kit Moore. So when it comes to things we have permission to hack, because remember, there are those who hack with permission and those who don't. And those who hack with permission are the white hats who don't get arrested. Uh, 99% of the time, and those who, who uh, hack for, uh, without permission or for, for profit. Um, when you see things on this H2 matrix, and this link is, is uh, associated with my, with my talk here, um, or just Google SANS H2 matrix, and you'll, you'll land right on this page. Uh, this is kind of a directory of past holiday hack challenge challenges. These are, these are little pieces of these, these greater, uh, larger challenges that we've, we've uh, put together um, for free. We're not pushing a product here. This is something we give out to the, the community. We want the world to play and learn every year because uh, we just love doing this and, and giving this away. So if you come to this page, you'll, you'll find a bunch of different challenges. Some of them are, are web app specific. Uh, some are not. Uh, but a, to look at a couple that are. So um, this is what it looks like when you log into the Holiday Hack Challenge. You can bounce around and you can talk to things like you can talk to Santa and his elves and then click on different challenges to pop up little terminals and, and then try to help uh, save Christmas. Somehow Christmas just keeps getting in trouble every year um, as much as we try to help Santa. So in this past holiday hack, the one we released last December, one of the challenges is, uh, is very plainly a web application. It's more complex than Kitten War, but less complex than some others you may see. Now, for, for those who don't know, uh, there used to be this game back 100 years ago when I was a kid called the Oregon Trail. And you would try to get your family from the East Coast out to Oregon um, because you want to be more like Jeff McJunkin, just getting, because you want to, uh, you know, get to the, I don't know what it was, the gold rush or, or whatever, but uh, you had to, you know, get your, uh, get your wagon together and pick how many oxen you were going to have and, and you'd encounter, encounter all these troubles along the way. Uh, so this is this is a uh, a replica of that in a lot of ways. It's an homage to the old Oregon Trail, and rather than being built on big floppy disks and run in your old Apple II, uh, it's it's all done in a web browser. Uh, by the way, my wife got me this. I think it's really cute. It's an Oregon Trail little mini game. Uh, she found it at a craft store that was closing, um, so you can play the original on uh, just about anything. It's on smartphones and everything. So. Uh, so let's look at this. This is, uh, this is something we built. You have permission to hack it. Please play and learn. Uh, and we have it set up at different difficulty levels. So beginning with, with easy, let's click into the game. And we see, all right, starting right off here is we've got some money. We maybe need some more, some more reindeer so we can change some of these values here. Maybe a spare runner in case a runner breaks. Um, ammo is always good to have, right? And we can see how much money I have left. Now, Remember that this is all code that is sent to us from the web server that then our client, our web browser, interprets to look uh, like this with green lines and text boxes. Um, so what's neat about that is we can play with it. So I just hit uh, F12. In most browsers, you can hit F12 or Control-Shift-I to get the developer console. Uh, and this is, this is a way, really, it's, it's designed for people who are developing web pages to kind of poke around with their own stuff and figure out uh, you know, why something isn't showing up the right color or why something isn't working the way they expect. Um, but we can also use it for uh, our own web app 
testing purposes. So maybe I wanna, you know, I see this money remaining field and I can't, I can't type in it, but I'd really love to change how much money I have left. So I can use, I can either go to uh, another spot we'll get to, but uh, the easiest way is to click this little picker right here in the upper left. And then it lets me pick different elements of the web page. So I can pick this money remaining field. And maybe I don't know a lot of HTML. Maybe I don't know what a class is or, or uh, some of these different things, the background color, but I see something in here that says disabled. Well, if I double click that, I can actually change this and hit enter just to leave the disabled thing. And now, now I can change the values in the page. Now, um, this might seem kind of silly, uh, but this is how uh, web browsers work, right? It's just interpreting the code that came down from the server. It decides what we can and cannot interact with. So if I just change something here, it's changed on my page. Now, in this instance, it won't actually report back to the game that way. If I go ahead and click buy, I don't end up with 18,000 money left over, right? It, it brought it back to the regular value. But uh, there are instances where you can just re-enable elements of a website and then you, you can then interact with it when they didn't expect you to, when the web developer didn't expect you to. Um, when it comes to, to hacking and pen testing, there's this classic conversation that goes on between the developer and the pen tester. And the developer says, uh, well, this is how it's set up. And the pen tester says, well, what if I do this? And the developer says, well, why would you do that? Because I'm a hacker, I'm a tinkerer. If, if you've ever messed with anything, um, there was a question uh, for Jeff. It said, when did you begin hacking? Um, he said, I think he said like college, but really if, if you press him on it, I bet he'll tell you elementary school. Like we've all tried to tinker with things to figure out how they work the way they work and, and kind of to do things that the developer didn't intend or didn't expect to see what would happen. Um, I mean, when we pick up the truck and bang it on the floor, that's not what the, the designer of that toy truck intended. Anyway, so that's what a lot of, of pen testing is, just poking around and playing. So, so here we go, we're, we're in the, the game here and we can click go and our sleigh moves forward. Uh, we can hover over the little go button there and the reindeer wiggles, that's awesome. And as we move forward, we can see our distance remaining to the North Pole keeps decreasing. And the date keeps advancing. And the goal here is to get to the North Pole before Christmas Day, because that's kind of a big day at the North Pole, right? Um, now, if you'll notice here, we have like a little pretend URL bar. Our real URL bar is up here. Just pay it no mind right now. And we see uh, right here that we've got um, a bunch of variables. These are, these are parameters. Um, it, they're values that are passed from the browser to the web server whenever we click go. And as we scroll through them here, we'll see things like distance 231. Well, I started at 8,000 and if the distance is 231, I bet 8,000 minus 231 is 7769. So what if I change that to 7,900 and hit go? Bam, 100 left. I'm almost at the North Pole, that's great. Wait, I saw money in there too. So what if I go to money and change that from 1,800 to 18,000? So right here, I got my 1,800, but I want to make it 18,000, hit go, bam, 18,000 money. Awesome. So this is one way that we see values passed to a web server. You might notice when you're shopping or when you're browsing the web, you'll see up in the, up in the address bar, you know, whatever site.com slash some page, question mark, uh, document equals five. Uh, in, a lot of, uh, in a lot of different cases, you can just modify that document equals five to document equals six and then see another document if you have permission to be poking around like that. Um, sometimes in apps, there'll be something just, just as simple that we can play with right in the URL bar uh, and then we can get to the North Pole super fast. I mean, by a pair of jeans. So I hit go, 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 and here we go. The whole team made it, everybody's happy. Uh, I'd like to play again. So more commonly nowadays, we, um, we pass parameters a different way. Right, because people see things in the URL bar and they're, they're gonna try different things. Uh, they're, gonna be, they're gonna be hackers, hackers gonna hack. So, so let's say there's nothing in the URL bar, but still these values are being passed and it's still moving us on down the holiday hack trail. So we look at it and we think and we go, well, geez, maybe it's, maybe, maybe it's these numbers down here. So let's go ahead and pick those numbers. I wanna pick my money number. And then, okay, so there's the 250. I wanna make that 25,000, bam, 25,000. And then move on down the road, and it's back to 250. Well, that's a bummer. Um, it turns out this 250 is just something that we see, just a, a visual representation for us. So if we poke around a little bit, we can find other things in here. So there's, and if you notice too, when we kind of hover over the code here, it'll highlight the different sections that they represent, super handy. And I see there's, there's a, a, 
a division here, a div called status container. And if I look in here, I see a lot of those same values we had before, money and distance. And what happens if we change to 7,900 and 25,000 and then click go, is that what's being passed? And yes, in fact, that's what it was paying attention to. So it wasn't paying attention to the numbers in my, in the little table in the, the white and green there. It was actually looking at these values that are, that are hidden. Uh, but that are stored in our browser. Again, this is all about what's happening client side. They can do all the text they want server side, uh, but if, they, if they're gonna trust what comes back from the browser, then that's something we can poke with. So uh, we can continue on and go on down the trail and win again. Um, so um, uh, Lee, if you could let me know, by the way, uh, how long you want me to go. If, if you want me to stop at, uh, at three, I certainly can. Uh, I do encourage people to go and, and play with this. Uh, the hard level, by the way, if you do give that a shot, it's going to work similar to the, the medium mode, except that in the status container, there's also a special value at the end called a hash. And you have to make sure that that hash matches what the server is expecting or else uh, you won't be able to, uh, it, it'll know that you were messing with, thing, with things, right? So the developer at this point is going, I know what you guys did in easy and medium. I'm gonna go ahead and, and, and uh, make this special value, this hash. And, uh, and that's what I'm gonna use to validate uh, coming back. Uh, by the way, if you're curious about hashes, check out J Jason Nicola's talk yesterday. He did a great talk on password hashes and how those work. And this is gonna be similar to that. So we'll go just uh, a couple more, more minutes here. Um, by the way, if you get if you want to try these and you get stuck on any of them for any for any holiday hack that's already done, the answers are posted on the web. We have these we have a competition and the, the best punch coins. The very best entry gets a free sans class. Uh, we got to give a couple of those away last year. Um, this is one of the very best entries we had last year from someone named Sala Heldon. Uh, another entry from the team at ESNet. They do such a great job. If you play any of these challenges and you get stuck. Don't be stuck for long, right? Just go ahead and come back uh, and look at the, the winning entries and you can just go through and see these wonderful write-ups they did explaining uh, every bit of, of how they worked through things on a whiteboard uh, and then how they mapped them all out and how they solved the challenges. Um, I'll point you to one more, by the way. Uh, this is one from a friend of mine, Evan Booth, another counter hack uh, guy, a really smart, creative guy. Uh, and this, is, this, um, this challenge in the game was about opening a crate for an elf. And on that crate were these locks. And each of the locks had to be opened in a different way. And every one of them is opened by um, just manipulating what's in the browser. So he did some really neat things. Uh, you don't need a clever riddle to open the console and scroll a little. Uh, what does he mean there? Well, if, if we're not sure, we can click get a hint. And it says, Google your browser name, developer tools console. Uh, the code is eight characters alphanumeric. So if I, I'm going to take that hint, I'm going to click console and scroll around. Oh, there's a code. So I hit six, eight. B U D nine Q one unlock there we see the lock disengaged and we finished we, we saw the first lock so another great way to 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 get a good feel for what's going on uh, in the browser there um, I'm gonna go to to questions here uh, if you do by the way want to get in touch after this um, I tend not to accept uh, LinkedIn invites from people I don't know. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sure you're a great person, but uh, I am on Twitter. DMs are open. So if you can remember how to spell uh, LG, you can find me pretty fast. There are not a lot of us. <laughs>